It's great to meet you. Thank you for Likewise. taking a minute. Thank you. Very much. I appreciate it. So before we get into your work, I want to know, we're getting on this four year anniversary of the pandemic. How did you get through the pandemic? How did it change you? Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, man, it's just been, uh, as far as at a professional point of view, <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Professionally, so, the best thing that happened. From a personal yeah. point of view, yeah. I mean, it just really defines, the, you know, really kind of got an insight of, uh, you know, you, you go through all the different emotions from the waves of like, oh, well, what are they doing? Why are they doing that? You know, all that stuff, right? All the disconnect. And then you kind of circle back to the to the point of like, well, you know, it is kind of their choice. And, you know, so you, you experience it all, but you get a really, you know, from a personal point, Joe, I would say just a really solid understanding of the human psyche, how it goes through, and also a respect for the human psyche. You know what I mean? One way or the other, it's, you know, it's your journey. So you went from, you know, judgment to respect, I would say from that point. But the business side of it, we've just, you know, because we're in that world of being, nobody's really communicating. You just start, we've met some of the most incredible people. And that that has just been an incredible, I mean, the the vibrational matches we've been able to meet throughout this process and the authentic relationships have just been, I don't even know if you can put a price on them. Yeah. Well, I think that's a part of the the what we saw the tidal wave afterwards was there was this increased notion of mental health, A, B, manifest destiny. People were tired of just living in robot mode. You right. know, people wanted to get to the crux of like, why am I here? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? If we're hitting a complete stop right now and I can reset and restart, what do I want to do? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? that's, that's pretty much right. Yeah, I mean, and for all of the tragedy, the travesty that we went through, all of the death and woe doesn't take away from any of that. I think there was a lot of people out there that finally hit that point where it's like, why am I here? And that's right. great. I think for humanity, I think that's a good point to be at. I think so. And I think a lot of I mean, this is just a personal uh, perspective. And I just kind of thought about it when you said it, though. <clears throat> and I think a lot of people that exited, right, and they went on to a different dimension they it was just part of their destiny maybe for the ones like from our perspective it was the greatest thing that ever happened personally professionally i mean there was just so many good things that came out of a tragic situation but for those that couldn't see that perspective of it yeah and they were just like this is too much for me to deal with. I, 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 I want to, I'm ready to exit. Um, and this is my exit strategy and that's fine too. Yeah. You know, the one thing I think about, there was a show on HBO called left behind and mm -hmm. it was yeah. have you, okay. Yeah, so, totally. and, and I remember it because for some reason, the day of the rapture was the day after my birthday on the 14th of October. So wow. all of that was cemented in my brain, but I think sometimes when I'm walking around, I'm like, I feel like that's what's happening right now. Like, all of us went through this wave. Yeah. I mean, you know, I the Spanish flu was kind of the same thing. It really went. And that was that was more hardcore. I mean, that was when people were hanging flags and whole families would be taken out. And it was just a different era of medical delivery and all of that. So, yeah. And then, you know, you got people that I think that for whatever that just happened, just we went through, it just activated something in people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether it be something one way or another. I don't know something yeah. got activated it's almost like sometimes you walk by people and you can physically see each other but you're not in the same place you know what yeah. I mean they're they're literally in a different dimension they feel confused you know what am I what am I here for where am I at you know they feel stuck and you, know, you can see a lot of these things so um the beauty of it is is that you get to really acknowledge the mystery of life there's something going on out there uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean uh -huh. so you know really yeah yeah it kind of materialized it so I love the fact so you're 5D mystics, and for people out there to understand exactly what you do, I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day, and one right. of the kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I would say um, we connect with our higher self, or if it's someone in like third grade, let's say, it's connecting with your source energy, if you want to call that God, if you want to call that with your higher self, if you want to call that with your um, higher consciousness, but it's understanding that everything we need is within. Everything that we have been taught that it's on the outside, you have to go outside for looking for answers. You have to go outside to, 
to become this or to become that when the truth of the matter is it's it's really all within and basically what a mystic is it's somebody who has extraordinary experiences with the divine it, to to put it as in the most simplistic format so are you a mystic yeah joe you're probably a mystic too if, right. if, if, if other people say, you know what, I've had really extraordinary experiences that I really can't explain or that I know that are, you know, feel like it's from out of this realm. That is really what a mystic is. It's having these experiences over and over and over again, whether it's with your higher consciousness, your higher self, the divine, whatever you want to reference it as. And then it's taking that information and being able to retrieve it, download it, interpret it, and then deliver it or and or act on it. Very well said. That's such a good way of putting it into a way that I think people can understand. Because I think that's the thing about being human is that we like I always try. I always like to talk to people about those moments where when did you realize there is a God? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because there's yes. those moments and it yes. doesn't necessarily have to be tragic. What was that for you? What was the moment where you knew that there was something bigger than you, something bigger that that represented spirituality? What was the moment for you? So we, uh, our backgrounds in financial services, and we had a very successful third dimensional business. You know, you show up at a certain time, you leave at a certain time, you know, money in, money out, all that good stuff. And that's there. But we, we started to realize pretty quickly that there's there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, you know, you can start to feel the vibrations. You'd start to think something and it'd manifest, you know what I mean? And it'd start to, uh, you know, you'd start to like think about someone they would call on me, but it became very profound if you would. And, you know, we're both, we're just kind of aligned at that point in time, right from go. So I think maybe that even manifested even more profound. So we actually ended up selling our business, you know, at the height of it and said, you know what? Let's go on this journey and let's find out. There's a mystery in life. There's something going down here. Um, we got to find out what what's really happening there. You know, we knew we were we were at that place in our lives. We're like, all right, well, we know how to make money, so let's let's check that off the list, for example. But let's find out the mysteries and find out another way to you know make money. So we got into this this uh, thing of the internet at that time back in 2010. We said we we probably should figure this thing out, <laughs> and so so we went into that and. Our background was always about uh, asking questions of people, right? So we're like, well, the best way we know, what we know how to do is ask questions. Mm -hmm. So we said, let's interview these people, every belief system, every thought process, everything like that. And we really started to get their vibe and really started to find out. And the objective really was, well, how do you get through life? How are you finding out how to prosper? How are you finding these things out there? What drives you? What gets you to sleep at night? What gets you to the next day without just, you know, freaking out if you would? That experience turned into something called spiritually raw. And so we've just ran with that ever since for 10 plus years. But uh, it's it's an, it's an ongoing thing, Joe. It's always realizing that, you know, the closer and closer as we get it, that we are, our belief system, if you would, is that we are really co-creating that. So yeah, yeah. there's a there's a master creator, if you want to call it of some sort. And we're and we if we are alignment and frequencies there, we get to tap into that master creator, get that information, if you would, to start to create here on where we're at right now. So it's an ongoing journey. I mean, I think that it's a it's a beautiful experience. There's something there. Um, and, you know, we kind of liken it to a little bit of a video game. There's different levels you, you level up. And, yeah. you know, if you if we look at it from that perspective, we kind of feel like, you know, hey, you know what? Maybe we don't have to take things so seriously Life's all the time. pretty boring. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when you don't have a, a spirituality in your life, that's what, you know, you can have all the riches in the world, but yeah. if you talk to a lot of rich yeah. people that are not have a spiritual essence or a spiritual foundation, mm -hmm. there's never enough money. Yep. There's how do I, why do I have all this money, but I have no happiness? Why can't right. I ever find peace in my life? And that is really the true riches in life or is just not necessarily completely figuring this stuff out because I don't think we'll ever figure it all out while, while we're on this earth plane, but going through the journey of figuring it out yeah. Yeah. and being tapped into the source and tapped into the energy of this grand orchestra. Yeah. And to realize the 
to realize that everything is possible. I mean, everything's possible. So it's not about the money. It's not about this. These are just components of these are like the 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 tokens, if you would, in the video game that you know we need, right? So we just take them on, we pick them up, we accumulate whatever. But at the end of the day, we we all know pragmatically, we'll never take any of it with us. Yeah. While we're here, we have fun with it. So you you know when you if you take a look at it from that perspective, that we're a hundred percent of us are going to get to the finish line of wherever that we're at right now. So we're all going to go through the same experience. That circle of life, um, you know, passes no, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't judge anything. It just says we're all going. Yeah. So it is what it is. So let's have fun with it. Let's, let's accumulate it. I mean, and I, and I think when we have approached it this way, our manifestations have really exploded. We really have because of the fact that we really, again, really looked at life from a very different situation, not from a place of, freaking out or what's happening or what happened or anything like that is being in that moment okay stay in that moment do whatever the hell you got to do to stay in that moment so we can get whatever's inspiring us to get it because if you go too far forward too far back you know you miss the mark yeah. right yeah. so it's just it's just really staying in that place it's interesting you talked about going on this quest and interviewing a lot of people there was a musician i have a jazz show and there's a musician that i interviewed and his name is david david friesen and he's a he's a legendary jazz bassist and he went on a spiritual quest and he went through all of the different religions and really delved in. And I said, what did you figure out? And he figured out the most important essential part of this. And any tenant of any spiritual path is forgiveness. Like that's, that's yeah. where he, that's where he landed. The, the capacity for humans to find a way to forgive anybody of anything. Is and the themselves. Most, exactly. Most exactly. importantly themselves. Yeah. 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 Which I agree with that, which is so hard because of our egos and the way it is. I mean, when you talk about coaches, like I'm like, what's the number one problem when you talk to a coach of any kind? They're like the people they're all they're hard on themselves. They beat themselves up all the time. We, you know, it's just a, it's a thing we're all guilty of. Yeah, 100 mm -hmm. percent. We just did a, a show on that the other day about like, you know, listen, Ooh, you got to learn to forgive yourself because that's too much. That's too heavy to move forward. <laughs> it's a yeah. lot of baggage, literally, you know, it, it weighs you down. And, you know, from every I mean, if you think about it, it weighs you down from every aspect of your life. You have to let it go. It's been done. It's done. You yeah. hopefully have learned from it. And if you have, then good on you. You'll you'll start to feel the release. And that's if, it. If you haven't, then you'll just, just see it greater. You know, you'll see a greater version the of patterns it. Yeah. in lots of ways all throughout your life. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Let's get to the alpha of your union. How did this begin? How did this begin and steamroll and become where we're at on this day in 2024? Are you are you talking about our relationship? I'm talking about the Venn diagram just crashing into each other. Yes, the the whole thing. Yes. So, um, as Jay had mentioned, we both were in the financial services industry, and this is almost 22 years ago now. Um, and we both worked for the same company, but we didn't know each other. We both lived in Florida, didn't know each other, and this company was having an event in Texas. And we both went to this event in Texas wow. and uh, we literally, literally like ran into each other. And it was like, you know, it was that moment that, you know, you, you always wish you're ever going to have that like, oh my God, where have you been? Yeah. <laughs> And we have been together ever since. Yeah, it'd be totally weird if I said that story, man. You know what I mean? I'd be like, you do it. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it. <laughs> so you, you, we talked about energy and there's a vibrational level. Do you operate, do you think you, you both operate on that same frequency? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. we absolutely we do. do. But that doesn't mean it's been, that doesn't mean it's an easy, it's no. easy. Right. Okay. So even though we both operate on a, a higher frequency, we're both very stubborn and set in our ways and type eight personalities and you know your way is right and my way is right so it took us a very long time you know because we were in business from pretty much virtually day one so it took us many years to be able to reflect we you know went through we went through you know very difficult periods of time both personally and professionally but we never gave up and we you know, by, by universe, the, whatever you want to call it, kept us together. And, um, we were able to figure our shit out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we okay. were able to identify, That's pretty much. Too. we, we were yeah. clearly able to identify our successes or not successes were completely us. You yeah. know what I mean? We were, we right. were, 
we're good together we, we're we're boom we're ooh, okay let's stop that right <laughs> you know I mean? and when yeah. you're when you're in a personal relationship and you're also business partners if you're having conflict in your personal life it's you're going to have some serious conflict in your business life like you cannot be in a negative place in your personal life and have your business excel yeah. i've never seen it happen yeah. <laughs> right so so when we're personally doing, and it used to be before it was all, it was in waves. Like we would go through a wave of like, this is awesome. We would make a lot of money and then the relationship thing would happen and it would crush and then things would start to come down. So it took us a long time to learn how to balance that. So, and now we're at the point that, you know, because we've done all of the shadow work, all of the looking within, all of the stuff that we had to do personally and individually, now um, those issues don't happen as frequently, but when we very we, minor when, when they do, it's like, yeah, we're like, yeah, we're like, oh, that's a, that's a problem. And yeah. you know, these yeah. shows help so much because they keep us in a moment. So we can come into the show, like even meeting with you and have had whatever, but we're in the show by the time we've left it, because of the vibrational high you get out of it. Yeah. It's like, what was that even about? It's gone. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, well, I mean, that's like when you, when you think back to 10 years ago, what really bothered you, you just don't even remember you know, it's like right. things just melt away, you know. So yeah. how, how long have you been together? It'll be 22 years. It's a long time. So what do you what do each of you admire the most about each other? I would say with Jay, well, he's funny. He has the, a very funny, witty sense of humor. But I would say he's also the most enlightened and balanced person I've ever met in my life. And he truly has an open heart. Thank you, darling. So, <laughs> so obviously, you know, I, the fact that when I met April, she in a, in the financial services world, very masculine, very ego driven, if you would, and she's making more money and more successful than most of us were. You know what I mean? So she knew how to play in that thing. She understood it, the disciplines of what it took. Very pragmatic, very business like. I mean, just really understood it. So, and it wasn't like okay, like even when we started to do these ventures, it was never like you know, oh, let's try on this idea together. You know, we could do it as a couple. It was like, all right, let's go. You know what I mean? There was that instinct. There's, she's got that instinct. And, and uh, you know, and just, and the grounding factor. And I will tell you right now, it's uh, for me, because I'm a lot, I do a lot of the, uh, the the talking to people in our business, if you would, on the phone. This is my courage. So this is what gives me the courage. April gives me the insight. I'm like, I'll have a meeting with someone. I'm like, okay, this is what I got. And then she's like, this is what you do. This is how you handle it. I mean, boom, yeah. I get it. I get it. Boom. And I go. And it just seems to manifest like that. We have an interesting dynamic in that. I usually, the majority of the time, come up with the ideas. Yeah. I'll throw Jay a bone every now and again. He gets a good idea. <laughs> But it's usually my, uh, my ideas. No ego, but right? <laughs> he delivers it, right? So I retrieve the information and, you know, it, it'll come to me and then I'll be like, you know what? I, I, I just got a great idea. Something just came to me. And then he delivers it and brings it and manifests or brings it to fruition, brings it to reality. Yeah, there's a teeter-totter that goes into it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So before we leave this land of third grade, what did you want to be when you were a kid? What was your dream to grow up and become? I always thought I was going to be a veterinarian for the longest time. And then I went through a phase. I thought I was going to be an interior decorator for the longest time. But the one thing I always knew, I wanted to work for myself. I knew that I, even from, I mean, as young as I can ever remember, I always knew I couldn't be in an environment where it was structured. And that's why I didn't like school. I, mean, I liked school because it was a social event, but I hated it because it was too structured and you had to get up at a certain time and, and everything was always by the clock, by the clock, by the clock, by the clock, by the clock. And, and I hated it. it just didn't go with my system. So I knew from a very young age, I wanted to make a lot of money. So I had to figure out how am I going to make a lot of money, but work for myself at the same time so I can have the freedom to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. I would say I was never really attracted you know, to any occupation whatsoever at any point. Even much as I tried, I was like, I'd go through all these things that they put us through high school and everything. And I couldn't do it. And I, on my birthday, when I was 16, I was like, well, I, I resolved to the point. I'm like, I'm not going to go to college because I don't, I'm not getting anything out of where I'm at. So I went on this beach and the guy would pay us $50 to get people into timeshares. 
and I'd walk the beach yeah. and I started doing that. I'm like, oh, I'm making money at this. This is kind of good. I'm 16. And so I was like, I think I need to do something like this. And I started to just work on that and figured it out and go through these different sales gigs and everything like that. But I knew my, I knew very early on that, you know, it was, I needed to be into something that what I, my efforts would reflect what I got, you know what I mean? What I eat, what I kill is kind of thing like that. But that's what I knew I needed to do. But as far as defining any profession, I don't think I was ever looking back hindsight. I don't think there was anything that was like, Oh, I want to be that. Or I want to be that. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Let's say an atheist was to come to you and they're on the fence. They hit some awakening in their lives and, and they're curious. How are you going to convince them that there's a level, there's another side, there's an, a, a, in, in the stranger things world, there's an upside down world that they're not aware of. What would you say to them to convince them that there is another side that they can explore? I can only say this from personal experience. Every atheist I've ever met <laughs> became an atheist because they grew up in an environment where religion was shoved down their throat. Yeah. So that's why they rebelled. So it's not like they don't believe in anything because it's kind of almost like an oxymoron. You, an atheist believes that they don't believe in anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. right yeah. so yeah. that means that they do believe yeah. in something it's just that they have to find out what that something is that resonates with them mm -hmm. because what they were taught in their youth didn't resonate it, it yeah. repelled it made them angry it made them realize that you know you're something doesn't feel right so that must mean that all of religion or all of it is just way off yeah, yeah. I would basically so say I would that, probably agree with them. Yeah, I, I, like yeah. you were right all along. Well, yeah. I would say, how's that working out for you? And tell me about that. And then obviously, if they're on the fence or coming forth, there's something missing. And then, then you, we just talk to. I mean, I don't think it's our job to, you know, try to convince anything of the other side. I think at some point in time, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna continually do the search because they realize that they're not fully complete. I mean, nobody yeah, really yeah. ultimately feels fully complete. There's always that essence, whether it be one percent or. 90% that's missing within us that keeps us on the go. I mean, I think you alluded to it earlier, like, you know, maybe, maybe two years ago, you were Christian, then you became a Buddhist, then you became a new age person, then you became an atheist, then you circle back and you became a stoic. And, you know, now you're there, you know what I mean? We're just, we're just circling the rounds mm -hmm. is, is how I see it. I'm like, just let it go through the journey, <laughs> go through the wheel, man. You know, you'll figure it'll, it'll get better. And if you start to feel good with it, hang on to that one for a that's while. Until the next thing makes you feel a lot better is, you know, well said. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this. Everyone out there has a perception of you, your family, your friends, your clients, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? A free spirit. Um, I have a big heart, but I absolutely have no tolerance for incompetence um, or what's the other word? Like, um, I just like I, I have very low tolerance for what, what is that word for like people that like impatient. It, yeah not so much impatience but like I, I'm willing to, to try anything and I'm willing to you know help people try to but if you're okay so from this perspective like Jay and I if we say we're going to do something we don't go in it 80%, 90%, not even right. 99%. You're going to get 120% of our dedicated effort. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if others that we are around or working with us, if they do not deliver, I just don't have tolerance. I don't have the patience for it because I feel like it's, it's you know, we, we, we resonate with others that are similar to us, you know, that if they're going to, if we're going to give, then we expect uh, equally as much in return. Yeah. So I would, I would say like, you know, my perception of me is like, I'm the person that fits into your plants. You know what I mean? Like literally, like, you know, you got something, you know, you, let's take a look at where I'm at. I'm that person that can fit into your plans and really help, help you get on the thing and really help you connect that dots. I'm that guy. Right. So, and I say that from a place and I, and from a place of, look, this is who we all should be. 
we should all find a way to fit into each other's plans because we're interconnected, whether you want to think it or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's one thing we seem to do. So we got to figure out how to root the other one. Uh, we got to root the other one on. We got to figure out when someone's successful, champion them on because they just showed us a way that there is a way out there that we can all grab to because it's been done. You know what I mean? We, we got to do those things. And like to speak to your point, yeah, it's really lead follower, get out of the way. I was trying to say yeah. thank you. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So if anyone out there wants to reach out, they're interested, they want to get to another place in their lives, what's the good business? How do they do that? So yeah, check us out on Instagram, 5D underscore mystics. That's the best way to do it. They'll get little glimpses of us, kind of get our style, our vibe. Um, you know, it's that's the best way to get us. They'll get all of our assets there, meaning our, what our show's about, what the Gnostic TV network's about, everything we do. So I would say check us out there, you know, and look. And then look our website us. too, yeah. if they want to go a little further, it has our, our backstory and stuff. It's 5dmystics.com. 5dmystics.com, yeah. Excellent. April and Jay, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks. Much, much love. love to you, Joe. Thanks.